So, how do you show respect and dignity to a scarecrow? Well, according to Google, <laughs> you have to provide your scary pal a hat. Standing there in the sun for hours on end could stir the evil fellow's or the fellow's evil inclinations. A hat will keep it cool in the summer and happy as a clam. It also provides dignity, so the birds will fear it properly. As for the clothes you clad the spindly feature of a scarecrow with, they can be hand-me-downs, but you should never wear them yourself afterward. Once you give the scarecrow an item of clothing, you are not allowed to take it off and give it to another human. It's just a recipe for disaster, and you could pay a heavy price for it. Next is the aforementioned fairy rings. Some mushrooms grow in circles. For the unsuspecting eye, that could just be a coincidence, but for a brain like mine, steeped in myth and folklore, there's a very good explanation for that. According to these people, mushroom circles sprout where fairies have previously formed a circle and danced. And as we all know, it's never a good thing to step into a fairy ring. It's just asking for bad luck, and only an ignorant person would do such a foolish thing, according to what I read. But, what would happen? For one thing, fairies are invisible to us mortals, and they trap the person who steps into the fairy ring and keep them imprisoned with their unnatural enchantments. However, there's a solution to this predicament. In order to confuse the fairies, you should sprinkle an aromatic herb such as rosemary on the ground. This smell will give you time as the fairies get intoxicated by it, and it lets you escape unscathed. I myself have seen three fairy rings in person, and each one was just as magical as the last to me, but I took pictures from far away and left it alone, because I'm very superstitious, and I'm not messing with that stuff. Ladies' Mantle. If you're familiar with alchemy, it's that field of science where you try to turn a base metal into gold. Now, before you raise your eyebrows at me, I see you. You should know that Isaac Newton has dabbled with this, and even drank some of his own potions. I know, what has that got to do with ladies' mantle, right? The answer is in the scientific name of this plant. Um, Alchemilla mollis, or the little alchemist, is the name that scientists use for this plant. And the name has to do with the myth that surrounds it. According to legend, the leaves of this plant collect dew in the morning. That dew was considered an important ingredient of the secret recipe to turn lead into gold. Now, since very few people still believe in alchemy, the magical properties of the dew that Lady's Mantle collects has faded over time. These days, gardeners just grow this plant for its ornamental value alone. Now, this wouldn't be a superstitious plant video, garden video, if I didn't mention the four-leaf clover. Now, if stepping on a fairy circle is asking for trouble, then coming across a four-leaf clover is the exact opposite. It is a sign that good things will come your way, and you might even be on your way to winning the lottery. Um, biblical, oh, I'm sorry, you have to thank Eve, yes, that Eve, for 